Welcome everyone, my name is Zon Ta from Repro Products and today's screencast is on a PowerPoint presentation of what's new in Revit 2017. The new features and enhancements that have been incorporated into the software actually will cover architectural platform, general enhancements, structural engineering enhancements, and MEP enhancements as well. Let's take a look at the Revit for Architecture and Platform tools. The first feature that has been enhanced and introduced is depth queuing. This gives us the ability to adjust the elevations to display what information is bolder and what information is lighter in the foreground versus the far end. The second improvement that they've introduced is creating railings that are a bit more intelligent. They have a better understanding of what the object host is and will conform to the shape of that object. We have introduced the new Format 360 converter as an add-in to the feature of the software. This gives you the ability to create Revit models and export them to Format 360 format. <coughs> as well as taking a Format 360 model and bringing it into Revit. You also have the ability to convert standard Revit family files into Format 360 modeling files and vice versa. We have a new uh, lighting analysis and energy analysis tool called Autodesk Insight 360. When you head over to the Analyze tab, you'll see a new panel called Insight 360. <clears throat> and it gives you the ability to visually see the information faster and easier uh, in a new web-based interface. A new feature that was introduced in Autodesk Revit 2016 R2 is Global Parameters. In 2017, the Global Parameters is part of the software now. Global parameters allow you to create generic parameters that can be associated with other parameters to make design cons uh, considerations and design situations have better relationships to each other. The rendering engine in Revit 2017 is now default to Autodesk Ray Tracer, whereas in Autodesk Revit 2016 R2, you had a choice between Mental Ray and Ray Tracer. The text editor has been improved in Revit 2017 to be a little bit cleaner, simpler to use. They've introduced tabbing, they've introduced bulleting, numbering, and just an overall slightly better functionality than the previous text editor tool. You now have the ability to input calculated parameters within a, a piece of annotation. Uh, and for example, a reason why you do this is to maybe figure out how, how many people are allotted within a particular square foot of a space that is being used in a particular manner. Dynamo has been fully integrated into Revit now and you can find that in the Manage tab of the ribbon. Whereas prior it was a separate download and, and install and it would be in the Add-ins tab of the ribbon. Dynamo gives you the ability to do visual programming and have relationship building, if you will, between your objects that you build in Revit and the actual Dynamo interface. The improvements have been also been made to scheduling you can now create a view schedule template whereas it used to be you couldn't do so and that's a nice feature because that way you can just apply that view template to any other schedule view that you want they've also adjusted and tweaked a little bit of the schedule window interface for how you total things out in a particular column you can also combine parameters into a single column and that might be useful for you down the road to 
make a nice cleaner looking schedule. That's it for the general and architectural enhancements. Let's focus in on the structural engineering enhancements to the software. For the structural enhancements, they've actually introduced quite a few things. They've introduced reinforcement connectors. So for those who are doing rebar detailing, you can put in connections and just make it a look a bit more realistic. You have variable rebar distribution capability. So when you're creating a rebar, it now has a better understanding of the irregularly shaped host object that you're putting it in. And that way you can schedule it out better. The graphical rebar constraints have been adjusted, so it's just easier for you to work with when you're creating your rebar and the placement of the rebar. The fabric sheets tool within Revit now have the ability for you to create bends in them because there might be a design situation in the floor slab or in the footing where you need to create fabric that is non-linear. They've introduced structural connectivity capability inside Revit 2017. <clears throat> this feature is actually coming from Autodesk Advanced Steel um, and that's a piece of software that Autodesk has that gives you the ability to create your steel connection details and within AutoCAD or Revit of a 3D model <clears throat> for shop creation level type of drawing. So that feature is now introduced into Revit 2017 and you can either create some generic <clears throat> connections or some default types of connections, say a clip angle or a column to footing connection, so on and so forth. The steel connections capability just gives you the ability to create a lot more accurate uh, Revit models and helps you from the design intent standpoint a bit better as a structure engineer. You now have the ability to split a column using the split command, similar to when you use the split tool command when you're splitting a wall or a pipe or ductwork or conduit. You have more accurate and consistent steel content now. They've actually increased that database of information. <clears throat> and then they have also improved the connection between the structural foundation and the column that sits on it. It used to be set up such that when you moved or adjusted the height of the footing, the column that was attached to it uh, didn't actually adjust properly. And now they've corrected this. And that's it for the structural based enhancements. Let's go ahead and take a look at the MEP enhancements. <clears throat> As you may or know, in Revit 2016, uh, they introduced fabrication capability. And so in 2017, they have enhanced it and made it more functional for the uh, most part. <clears throat> you have the ability now to select an entire run or entire series of duct work for the system itself and use a new command called design to fabrication that allows you to automatically change all of the standard Revit duct work, for example, to fabrication part level objects. And it's a much faster process than before. <clears throat> you have the ability to tweak and adjust those objects faster and easier using another command called route and fill and it basically helps you with fixing the design faster and easier using the correct fabrication part. Using simple tools like Trim and Extend um, and Quick Connect are now available within the Revit 2017 software for those fabrication parts. It used to be where you couldn't use, <clears throat> for example, Trim or Extend on these objects, whereas you could with the standard Revit objects. And <clears throat> they've also obviously enhanced the objects so that you can introduce slope and just better documentation, annotation capability as well. 
they have improved the hangers that come with the software so now the hangers can be adjusted on either end you can also set up the relationship to have those steel rods either associated or not associated associated to the duct work it's holding on to you also have the ability to take these hangers and host them against other hangers in case there's a situation where you have ductwork stacked on top of each other. And that's it. Those are all the improvements and enhancements to Revit 2017. Thank you very much for watching. This is Zahn from Repo Products.